Добрый день, я витаю всех. Good afternoon and welcome everyone who joined us. Media Center Ukraine Ukraine Forum continues its work. 209th day of the full-scale invasion of the Russian occupant and the heroic resistance of the Ukrainian people. And today we are going to talk about the situation in Luhansk Oblast. We have Serhii Haidai with us. He's the head of Luhansk Oblast Military Administration. Serhii, welcome. Good afternoon. Sergei, I suggest we start from the issue that everybody is worried about right now. We hear everywhere that in the occupied territories there are messages that the so-called referendum is going to take place. Luhansk Oblast is not an exception. What is going on and how can you comment these statements of the occupants? Taking into account the fact that in the battlefield they are losing, the only thing that they have left is to have this quick hasty referendum of course it's going to be fake of course they're going to draw some results there to join the occupied territories of ukraine to the russian federation to do the two things after that first to attempt to maintain the territories as they are right now so that the line will be on the front line as it is now and the second to prevent the further deoccupation of the temporarily occupied territories if we continue to deoccupy they can say that this is the attack on Russia and then they will be able to do forced mobilization in Russia. Bilohorikva you have recently said that it is already under the control of our armed forces what is going on in those villages, towns that we control right now? Well, Bilohorovka is the locality that has always been the last forepost of Luhansk Oblast. And 100% Bilohorovka has not been occupied by the Russian army. In its territory, there was some heavy fighting all the time. And now our military have pressed the occupants out of it and control Bilohorivka. But this doesn't mean that we have counteroffensive going on. It just means that Bilohorivka that was constantly shelled, all the Russian diversion groups have been entering. It means that they will not be doing that any longer, although the shelling is still happening. Bilohorivka itself has almost been destroyed. The Russians have wiped it off the face of the earth. We have several villages in Luhansk Oblast, unfortunately, where the active phase, active battles were happening. Popasna, Novotoshkivka, Toshkivka, and Bilohorivka in particular. So here we have recently talked with the head of the Donetsk Oblast Military Administration, and we discussed that the primary task of the local authorities after the occupation is the evacuation of the remaining population. Do you have the same plan? Are you ready to implement this plan? We are ready because we have been evacuating for several months in a row. We clearly understand how to do it in a safe way. Thank God also during the entire time of the evacuation that was prepared and implemented by us no civilian people died and I'm convinced that after the occupation we will have to take out people from big cities such as Lysychansk, Rubizhne and Severodonetsk because the Russians destroyed all the critical infrastructure and in the villages people can provide themselves at least the heat with the help of coal or wood or something like that. In big cities it is not possible because the central heating isn't possible to restore in several months. It, it is impossible to restore gas supply. Everything is completely destroyed there. We see the results of our armed forces on destroying the dislocations of the Russian military. And let's talk about this. How do you evaluate this? I'm convinced that you have information not only about the hits of our armed forces, but also about the reaction of the local population or the occupants 
that are located in those villages and towns. Yes, in the recent weeks, we can say that some explosions are happening in the occupied territory of Luhansk Oblast and also deep in the back front of the Russian army. And these explosions are taking place where the military units are stationed or where they are keeping their munitions or in places where some heavy military equipment is stored. I can say that in these couple of weeks, we have destroyed many soldiers and officers, both of the so-called LNR and the representatives of the private military company Wagner. We have destroyed the munition warehouses and the equipment in Kremina, in Kadivka, in many places, and tonight as well, there were explosions, some aimed explosions. Our army has worked very well. It demoralizes the occupant's army, especially after the Kharkiv campaign. With the Kharkiv campaign happening, having these constant explosions in the territory that they thought was more or less calm, it demoralizes the army of the occupants a lot. What is the situation with the so-called mobilization? Are the occupants trying to mobilize into their armed forces our civilians that remained in those territories? Yes, this process is constantly happening. We can talk about waves, first, uh, third, fourth, but this process hasn't slowed down and at first they wore sort of a mask and talked about patriotic things they did some propaganda now there's no propaganda happening we even saw the wave of the so-called patriotism when people joined the Illinois army then by deceit they dragged people there they uh, promised them big salaries and now we see more or less the wave of the mobilization that is similar to, I think, repressions because they're just catching men in the streets, pack them into buses and take them immediately to the collection point to give them out the documents to go to the front line. Even the utility companies where of the critical infrastructure where it's impossible to do without men, there is a minimum amount of men. There used to be like 500 people working there, but they have like 200, so that they would somehow be able to maintain the work of the critical infrastructure, the networks and so on, everybody sent to the war. We have a question in the studio. Good afternoon, Yulia Bakumova, could inform. Please tell us about the humanitarian situation in the region. What is the situation with the food supply? medical supplies and what is happening with the welfare payments, retirement payments, our children who are born being registered. Thank you. Everything regarding the occupied parts of Lugansk Oblast, we can divide it into three parts, let's say. One part is the part that's been occupied in 2014. The second part is Luhansk Oblast that was occupied without battles. And there is also the part of Luhansk Oblast where the active phase, active battles were happening. So where the battles were happening, the situation is critical because the Russians, in the several months of active shelling, they destroyed everything. The system of water supply, gas supply, sewage, water, Everything is entirely destroyed, the electricity networks as well. It will be impossible to restore it quickly because these are huge networks that have been destroyed, that were servicing hundreds of thousands of people. For instance, in Bilohorivka, they destroyed the Popasna water services company infrastructure, which was servicing almost one million subscribers so the situation there is very very difficult on food supply food is being brought from the earlier occupied territory and from the russian federation 
on medication and everything else, there is a lack. Moreover, we have information that even from our hospitals where we supply some modern equipment, some hospitals that we renovated according to the president's program, we have information that equipment has been taken out of there and taken somewhere maybe towards Luhansk. What's with the medication and with healthcare? It's hard to say. I think unfortunately that after the occupation, we unfortunately will discover a very, very difficult picture. But now we are preparing the deoccupation offices, headquarters. We talk to Ukrposhta, the postal service, as soon as the military give us opportunity to reach this or that town or village. Immediately Ukrposhta comes in mobile units and they will be providing all the services that people will need. All the money will be paid. Moreover, we plan to also establish administrative services centers. Quickly, I've been talking to ambassadors of different countries to receive help on creating such mobile units of providing administrative services. So as soon as the territory is deoccupied, life there will not stop. Even for a day, we will immediately start supplying all the necessary things to the local citizens. Please tell us, is there opportunity now to deliver humanitarian aid into those territories? No, no, absolutely not. This is not possible because there's fighting everywhere. The occupants are not agreeing to any kind of negotiation. I can say that even when part of the Luhansk Oblast was still controlled by our Ukrainian authorities, but battles have been happening several times. We have tried to open some corridors in order to take our people safely. But all of these agreements were very, very relative because every time our buses were being shelled. Sergei, we saw the video of people queuing to get out of Luhansk Oblast. Probably collaborants and occupants were running back to Russia. Do you have any kind of information on that? Is this process still happening? Do all the people who wanted to get out already got out? There was the situation, there was some panic. It was a very powerful stream that we saw in Shasta, in Stanitsa Luhanska, when there was counteroffensive in Kharkiv Oblast. And I can say that now, indeed, the queues are smaller. But the interesting thing is that collaborators that cooperated with the occupants, they are not being let out from the Oblast. They are turned away, turned back. They are told that they need to work in your pseudo-republic, the LNR, so do go back. And some of the collaborators, they do not go back, but they live somewhere in the villages near the border. They are waiting for an opportunity to get away to Russia. Thank you for the information. Thank you for finding the time and joining us. Sergei Haidai was with us, the head of Luhansk Oblast Military Administration. Dear colleagues, I'd like to remind you that our next briefing will take place at 3 p.m. We will be talking about the project called Safety Educator that will allow communities to build a safe environment for children. And we will have Yaroslav Shanko, the Deputy Head of Juvenile Prevention, Director of National Police, visit us. Remain with us.